1967, the Team Lotus Transporter arrived here at the Snetterton Circuit, just 14 miles from its base in Hethel, near Norwich. And the car that the mechanics rolled out onto this tarmac was one that would revolutionise the world of Grand Prix racing. The car was the Lotus 49, another giant step forward from Lotus chief Colin Chapman, probably the most gifted racing car designer of all time. The key to the 49's success was its engine, a brand new Cosworth V8 paid for by Ford. At £100,000, it was probably the biggest bargain in the history of motorsport. Christened the DFV, standing for double four valve, it was a unique in being the first engine to form part of the structure of the car. The designer was one half of Cosworth, Keith Duckworth. If you're going to make a, a V8, there's no way that you can sensibly get a chassis, a tubeless structure around the engine or pods down the side. So you then decide that, well, we could do with making the engine as short as possible, and it doesn't matter how wide it is, um, and, but you need it short so you can get your fuel tank immediately in front of it. Now we get to the interesting bit. Um, we built the engine onto the car, as you can see, yes. and now uh, we built the rest of the suspension on the back of the engine because the engine itself is forming part of the structure of the car, right. and of course uh, it holds it all together. Now, if we can get that mounted on there, mm -hmm. get those picking up on those bolts, and we've got hang the rear suspension on the back there, we've got a complete structure right through the car. The things that Keith designs, he designs very carefully, and they do assemble, and usually work first time, uh, which did enable us to uh, get the engine ready to run on the test bed, uh, almost as soon as the, the, the last small pieces were finished manufacture. With Lotus number one driver Jim Clark out of Britain in tax exile, it fell to Graham Hill to give the car its first run at Snetterton, a moment recorded for prosperity by the Ford film unit. But he liked it. And Graham's first impressions? Well, it's such a poke. Mm. Not a bad old tool. Thirty years on, we brought Hill's car out of retirement from the National Motor Museum at Bewley to bask once again in the Snetterton sunshine. By the end of its life, spoilers and fat tyres would clutter the 49's simple shape. But in 1967 specification, it has to be one of the most beautiful racing cars ever made. Even more so when it comes alive. donned the period costume of open face helmet and goggles to truly appreciate the occasion and I also had to get used to another sign of the times there were no seat belts straight away this Lotus 49 just feels so light and nimble it goes where it points this was in the days before the big aerodynamic downforce cars relied just on mechanical grip so there wasn't really much of it. And with 400 horsepower, things could get pretty lively. Hill, Lotus 4. And Jim Clark, again, first on the grid. Jim Clark would lead all ten Grand Prix that he raced in with the green and yellow Lotus 49 and win five of them. Tragically, he would be killed in a Formula 2 race in April of 1968 before he could add to his two world titles. So it would be Hill who took his second crown that year, 28 years before young Damon would follow in his footsteps. It was Hill who was on pole position for the 49's debut at Zandvoort in Holland, with Clark back in eighth, having never driven the car before practice. But Hill would break down, leaving Clark to score the Lotus Ford's historic debut victory. It was a pattern to be repeated, but 
Was it just bad luck, or was Hill's style harder on the car? I think some of it was misfortunate that uh, Graham's car broke down a little more than Jimmy's, but Jimmy was a brilliant driver, treated the machinery very well, and nursed lots of cars home that other drivers would not have finished races with. In Clark's case, he, he perhaps it was a more naturally talented driver, though Graham was a very solid driver who never gave up, pressed on to the finish. Clark, I think, possibly might have been a little bit more sympathetic to machinery. And sympathy for the machinery was utmost in my mind every time I eased out onto the circuit. The National Motor Museum are proud of the fact that their exhibits still come alive, and I was soaking up every minute of the experience. When pushed nearer the limit, I could appreciate even more the artistry of the drivers of this era who caressed the cars along a fine line without the aid of the massive grip created by modern aerodynamic downforce. But my first impression? Like the man said, it's got some poke. With Clark gone, Hill took up the mantle of team leader as the glorious green and yellow gave way to the dawning of the commercial age and the first of the flying fag packet. Jochen Rint used the 49 on the way to his title in 1970 and by then a growing number of the opposition were using the Ford DFB power plants, including Jackie Stewart who won the title for Tyrrell in 69, 71 and 73. The DFB would remain competitive for an incredible 16 years, powering 12 world champions to their titles and winning an amazing 154 Grand Prix. 12 of those were won by the Lotus 49, a car that would remain competitive for four seasons and will be driven by five of motor racing's world champions. By any reckoning, the Lotus 49 must be one of the greatest racing cars ever.